guys Savino's Bots here. It has finally happened. I can finally pack away the winter blankets and I could not be happier. But with that challenge gone, there's a new challenge and that is making sure the horses nor myself don't die in the heat. I live in Florida. It gets really hot and it gets really humid and it's so hard to deal with. But I'm gonna give you some tips on how I determine if it's okay to ride and when it's not okay. And these are actually backed up by science. This isn't just, oh, if it's this temperature and this, then I don't ride. This is actually things that people have studied because I value scientific data quite a bit. If you haven't figured that out on this channel, I don't know what to say. So basically, when you're determining if it's too hot to ride, you can use a very simple equation. Don't freak out on me. I know it's math. Don't freak out on me. It's super easy, I promise. It's a heat index equation so you can figure out what your heat index is. I am going to suggest that you buy a wall thermometer to hang up where you ride or at your barn or whatever so you can get an accurate Fahrenheit reading. This is important, Fahrenheit reading on what the temperature is. Of course, you can, if you live in the UK or whatever, you can convert it with online stuff or other forms of math. So basically what you're gonna do with this equation is you're gonna take the temperature in Fahrenheit, not the feels like temperature, but the actual legitimate temperature of the air around you. And you're gonna take that and you're gonna add that to the humidity percentage. Now you're not gonna actually add a percent sign. All you're gonna do, let's do today for example, and this is why it's important to have a wall thermometer is because the weather app said we were supposed to have a high of 84. It's actually 86 degrees right now. So two degrees can mean quite a bit in this equation. So just make sure that you have like a wall thermometer somewhere, anything like that. Okay, so today it's 86 degrees with 55% humidity. So I added 86 to 55 and that is 141. Now remember that number for later. 141, I'm gonna put it right here. The equation is gonna show up right here, hopefully. I will remember to edit that in. Now, there's three levels of which you need to consider when you're like, oh, okay, right. <clears throat> if your sum is at or below 120 degrees, you're pretty much safe to ride. There's not much that's gonna happen to your horse unless you're being a douche nozzle and you're riding it for 20 hours straight and your horse isn't fit and you're going uphill in 20 inches of sand, okay? Like, you're fine. When you start getting that sum more towards 130 and 150 is when you have to be a little bit more careful. You're generally still pretty okay, but you need to make sure that your horse is intaking plenty of water, which, I mean, is duh, but you would be surprised. So if the sum is at 180 or above, just don't ride your horse. Don't ride your horse. They cannot sufficiently cool themselves when the heat index is that high. You have a huge, huge potential for heat stress and heat stroke, even if they're just outside. So we've talked about these three numbers, or three sets of numbers. Remember, my son was at 141, so we're kind of getting into that zone where it's a little iffy because we're getting, we're getting real close to 150 and it's only May in Florida. So there are days where I have to cancel lessons and be like, hey guys, sorry, it's not happening today. Uh, my horses matter more than, you know, the money I'm getting from lessons. <laughs> so, yeah. So of course you're always gonna wanna offer your horse fresh, cold water. Your horse is gonna drink about eight to 10 gallons a day, that's average. Mine, however, are part fish and they drink 20 gallons a day when it gets really hot and that's when they're staying inside. So imagine how much they drink if they were staying outside. In the summertime, it gets so hot here, I don't have outdoor troughs. I have two five gallon buckets for each horse except for the mini, he gets one five gallon bucket. And they are filled up at least twice a day, sometimes three if it gets really hot. You're also gonna wanna give them a source of electrolytes. And what happens when a horse sweats is that they use a lot of, so they lose a lot of sodium and I think it's potassium. So most horses are okay with just loose salt with them like free choice able to get to it just loose salt a lot of them are fine with that but some horses uh you might have to supplement that with an actual 
electrolyte that's meant for horses because it can just get too hot and they can lose too much stuff too quickly. And same for you, you should definitely stock up on the electrolytes if you're going to be sweating a lot. You also don't want to ride close to feeding time. If you have just fed your horse, you want to wait about four hours before you ride them because chewing and the whole digestive process creates a lot of heat. That's why you feed your horse a lot of hay in the winter time to keep them warm. You want to wait at least two hours after you've ridden your cooled down horse. Cool down your horses, guys. Don't be dicks. Cool down your horses. You want to wait two hours before you feed them again. And if you do hose off your horse, which I highly recommend because who wants to be sticky, gross, and sweaty? Not your horse. Your horse is itchy. Like, hose them off, but you also need to use a sweat scraper because the water in their hair will insulate and keep heat on them longer. So, I hope that has been a big help. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below. And I have also put some articles, as usual, in the description bar. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys soon.